Before we dive into today's video, I wanted to take a moment to talk to you about my Patreon. For just $4.99 a month, you can support the channel and help me continue to bring you better and better content. As a member, you'll get access to exclusive merch, custom videos, one-on-one -on -one calls, group calls with me and other members, video shout outs and uncensored content and behind the scenes content and be able to make specific requests for custom videos. If you're enjoying the content and want to see more, consider joining the Patreon family. Hit the link at the description of this video to join. Thanks for your support and let's get right into the video. So we got Seth here waiting on us in the lobby. We're about to have him join us for a nice little interview and questionnaire all about stem cells and how they can benefit all of us. So let's get right into this segment of the video. Welcome, Seth. How you doing, man? I'm good, man. How are you? I'm all right. How's your day going so far? It's good. Beautiful it's day good. here in Minnesota. Long weekend. Um, yeah, it's a beautiful day house. over here in South Carolina. Oh, what was that? You got a house? I just got back in the house. Uh, got to listen to what you're talking about. Good stuff. Yeah. What you What you been doing today? How's How's everything going? Uh, took Yeah, I took my kids to the fair. Uh, did a little bit of furniture shopping. Taking a little break to jump on this podcast with you. Cool. We're, we're gonna make it a nice little short. Okay. You know, informational pod for the people. I think this information will benefit a lot of people. I found you uh, on the Andy Elliott podcast, and um, I reached out to you from there, and you got me connected with some nurse practitioners in my area here in South Carolina, and I just want to thank you for doing that. I just got more stem cells today. I'm feeling absolutely nice. great. Um, I feel amazing. I'm feeling light. Uh, I actually got them injected this time at the uh, neck and at the back, So this is, and I also got an IV. So oh, great. I feel I feel amazing. What got you interested in stem cells and regenerative medicine? Was there a particular moment or experience that inspired you to start your company? You know, I wish I had like a really cool story about how I got started, but I've been a business entrepreneur for a long time. And I went to a marketing conference like eight and a half years ago, and um, I wasn't really looking to hear about stem cells. I didn't really know what they were, <laughs> but a a medical guy turned entrepreneur gave like a long talk about the next big thing in medicine and how it's changing lives. And I started looking at him like, oh, this is where all the athletes go. This is where the celebrities are going overseas to do the stuff. And he was showing us how to turn stem cells, this, you know, this industry into a business. So just the business side of me is what got me interested eight and a half years ago. I haven't looked back since. Now it's, it's, I eat, breathe, sleep, everything in the regenerative medicine space. So very happy to be in it, but um, I kind of got into it through a friend, like a, a business partner. I was just there to check out a marketing conference and we were both like, we want to get into this industry. This is really cool. Now, I have always been into health and fitness, love sports, play sports, follow sports. So it is a natural thing for me to be in. So it's certainly, you know, maybe it's divine providence or karma or luck or whatever you want to believe in. But it's certainly something that um, I'm very glad I I discovered. I'm sure you've seen the regenerative medicine field change a lot since you started. Big time. Um, what were you doing before you got into this uh, stem cell field? Oh, I've done everything. Um, I was doing financial services, actually. I was um, selling life insurance, annuities. I've done some home improvement. I've done some solar. Um, lot, Pretty much everything in the um, – anything you can sell or market, I've done it. And um, – you know, I'm 41, so I started in I started in the business sales world when I was in my early 20s. So I, I've 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 been around a little while, but like I said, it's been about eight years now, solid of regenerative medicine. Uh, do you have any personal experiences with stem cell yourself? Oh yeah, oh yeah. So I got my first treatment done um, during COVID about four years ago um, because stem cells are really good for boosting the immune system. So when everybody's, you know, worried about COVID, I, I got IVs done. Um, and after I got COVID, I should say after I got COVID, I got an IV done because um, I had a little bit of lung damage from COVID. 
Uh, since then, I've done my knees, my right shoulder, um, and my right elbow. Okay, nice. And I I do an IV myself um, about every six months. Every six months, okay. Yeah. So, would you recommend that time frame for someone dealing with issues? Uh, maybe every six months, maybe every month. Well, every month is pretty aggressive. I mean, some people do. And Andy Elliott does it every month. I, you know, but he's got, he's got all the awesome. money in the world. And, yeah, and, yeah. You know, optimizing. I don't know that that's necessary. Um, it really just depends on the person. Um, you know, if you have any autoimmune conditions, if you have a lot of inflammatory conditions, um, even something like Crohn's or irritable bowel syndrome, any any organ issues, then it's definitely a good idea to get as often as you can. If you have a depleted immune system, this can help doing at least every six months or a year. Uh, but again, it does depend on if you're young. I mean, you're, you're young, uh, real young. Um, I'm not, you know, if it weren't for your, your accident, you probably wouldn't need to do it all that often. Right. So there isn't, there isn't necessarily a set time where everybody at this age needs to do this because it really depends on the health, but keep in mind, there's zero harm and putting 80, 100 million cells into your bloodstream. Because one thing we do know is the more healthy stem cells we have in our body, the healthier we should be. So your organs, inflammation, immune system, everything's gonna be better off. Okay, so it can only benefit us. It can only, be, it can hurt you, yeah. So what's like the most exciting uh, potential application of stem cells that- Potentially? Oh, that's a great question, Mark. Great question. There is so much going on, like potential as far as I, I would say Alzheimer's and dementia is pretty cool because, you know, the, the brain is a large organ and it's it's really hard to treat now to get in the brain. Like with what I do in the U.S., we can't go anywhere near the, the brain, but overseas and there's been some clinical trials. The future for 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 brain health is really big, but also there's, um, you know, nerve regeneration. It's, it's already capable of, of regenerating some types of nerves for neuropathy, but even people in your condition, you know, there's a, there's a, a article I found, a, I found a couple of years ago. It says first paralyzed man treated with stem cells has regained upper body movement. That's not necessarily, I'm not saying it's very common, but it's the potential is there. Parkinson's. Any, yep. Yeah. Any movement at this, you know, with the spinal cord injury level, any movement gained back is a huge step forward. Yeah. Uh, Absolutely. Getting that independence back is huge for anyone in my yeah. situation. So in the next 10 years, how do you see stem cells evolving? Yeah, great question. Um, I I think I've seen in the last couple of years, it become more mainstream. There was a few years, maybe in the 2020 to 2022, it looked like the FDA was going to give a real hard time to the industry. So a lot of people were kind of scared. And the FDA kind of said, um, there's not much we can do with it. It's not a drug. So make sure doctors are doing it properly. So I'm seeing it even the last year become more and more talked about. So some of my clients um, are orthopedic doctors of major league baseball teams, football teams, NBA teams, high college, uh, you know, high level football teams. Um, so it's becoming way more common for things like soft tissue, you know, knees, hips, muscles, tendons, injuries. So we're already doing that, but I just think it's going to be, it's not going to be headline news every time, you know, like T Tyreek Hill, for example, the football player, he got stem cells over the summer and it was on, you know, CBS sports or Yahoo sports or, you know, whatever bleacher report, because it's still like a story. But what, what I know just from being behind the scenes is these guys are doing it all the time, whether they tell the media about it or not, it's something that's being done because there is no harm. You know, it's natural, unlike some of the other stuff that you can do could have negative side effects. So it's yeah. it, I think it's just going to become more and more mainstream. Then the ultimate goal would be that Medicare and insurance pays for it. That's what I would love to see in the next 10 years. Actually, I hope it happens before then. That would be the yeah. biggest boon, not just for that. That would obviously be huge for the general public. It would be huge, you know, instead yeah. of getting these. I feel like maybe three years ago. Uh, yeah, sorry. I'll cut you off there. But I feel like maybe three years ago there was a lot of skepticism revolved around stem cells. And just mm -hmm. as of recently, a lot of people are starting to pick it up, like you said, and even if it's underground, a lot of people are still doing it. So I feel like yep. that stigma yep. around and the misconceptions about stem cells are slowly dying away. Yep. Um, That's a great, point. So a great point. How do stem cells fit into wellness and recovery as a whole? Yeah. Well, what, one thing we know, um, 
overall wellness, anti-aging, I think I heard you talking about that. Stem cells can reprogram your body's old stem cells to act younger. So there's a lot of people that use it. Like I said, these IVs once a year or so, they just do it um, because it can help reprogram old cells to act younger. Your organs can potentially, you know, you can almost turn back the clock, especially if you're aging, you know, into your 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, especially um, kind of turn back the clock. It can regenerate healthy new tissue. But post injury, one thing we know for sure is when these athletes are getting like a major injury. Uh, for example, I'm here in Minnesota. Uh, Kirk Cousins, if you remember the quarterback, he got traded to the Falcons now, but he tore his Achilles last year in the middle of the season. It snapped, it rolled up his leg. We're not saying stem cells injection was going to heal the Achilles, but it made local news around here that after he got his stem, his Achilles surgically repaired, he went and got the same stem cells we put in your back, uh, that type of stem. So he got that put in his Achilles because what it's going to do is it's going to spur new uh, healthy blood vessels, which will spur blood flow, which means injured areas are going to heal way quicker. And they've really been doing this behind the scenes for five to 10 years. A lot of these guys with torn ACLs and Achilles, these athletes that used to take like a year and a half to really get back to where they were. If you notice some of these guys, they're back nine months later, better than ever. And, a big part of that is using things like stem cells to speed the healing process. Okay. So we see a lot of athletes doing it, but say someone watching this is the normal person. Yep. They may have a little bit of back pain, maybe a little bit of ankle pain. How would you pretty much prepare that person for a stem cell procedure? Yeah. So what, uh, what we would ask is, you know, is it just a little bit of back pain or is it something that's been diagnosed? Now, of course, this is an elective procedure. You're free to do it if you want to, but as far as more, if, if you're asking yourself, is it more necessary, right? Because it's going to cost a little bit of money. What, what you want to ask yourself is, is your injury or is your pain due to some sort of degenerative tissue? So is it a tendon, a ligament? Is it cartilage? Is it a bulging disc, a, de a degenerative disc? Those are, the, those are the real sweet spots when it comes to pain management. So if, if your back is messed up, is it messed up because you got a bulging disc? If so, great. We can put the stem cells right in that disc and it should replenish the disc and take the bulge away. Same thing with tears of tendons, ligaments, cartilage missing or being torn. So that's the real sweet spot when it comes to or, or scar tissue. So if somebody's had surgery prior and that area that they had surgery on is still bothersome, you probably have arthritis and scar tissue and stem cells can actually reverse osteoarthritis and, of course, heal scar tissue. So okay. long story short, find out what it is that's causing you the shoulder pain, back pain. And if it's something that has soft tissue defect, then this is the sweet spot. Okay. Soft tissue defects. Yep. Uh, yep. What, what are your long-term goals? Because how long have you been working with Regenerative Revival? Well, Regenerative Revival is just one of my companies I own in this space. Um, that's I, I'm a partner in that. That's been around about five years. I have several other companies. I'm in the um, I'm in the distribution side. I'm in the consulting side. I have a couple sales companies that directly market to people. My long-term goals is, is honestly just to make more inroads in this space, which I've really done, uh, not to pat myself on the back, but I've, I've done a good job of getting in, making inroads to a lot of the big players. So now I have relationships with directly with laboratories, with hospitals that, that, that um, collect the umbilical cords. Um, so I want to continue to make inroads so that I'm ready when the next breakthrough happens. So for example, if, and when somebody comes out with a stem cell product that it, that insurance is going to take or Medicare, I want to make sure that I'm, I'm there and ready for it. And I have the infrastructure set up in one of my companies to be able to, you know, help the masses. Um, obviously I want to help people. That's a big part of it. But as far as business goes, you know, it's, it's always good to be one of the first ones in. So that's that's my goal is to continue staying in the forefront of this industry, make more connections and um, see where it goes. Just make sure I'm along for the ride. Uh, we've been talking and I've been working with my insurance on trying to get this approved. Uh, I know they do cover it for some cancer. Yep. Um, yep. Some people with cancers and some stuff, stuff like that. But getting a spinal cord injury. Uh, stem cell is, you know, it's difficult, but we're working on it. That's more likely than like a bad knee or a shoulder. So, I mean, you, 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 you might, you might have some luck. You have a better chance than somebody that just says my knee and my back hurts because they'll, yeah. they'll say that's not life-threatening or whatever, but yeah. 
Absolutely, because I, I face things like spasms, uh, bowel and bladder irregularity. Yep. So yep. stem cells are all helping regenerate and helping me gain feeling in, in those uh, areas of my body. And so I'm really excited uh, about, you know, the future yeah. Of, yeah. of stem cells. And, you know, uh, hopefully one day this can be available to everyone and insurance can approve it for everyone. Um, so is there any experiments or projects that are out there right now that you're aware of that uh, are making, uh, you know, strides with stem cells and recovery for people or is it kind of yeah, just, yeah. so you know, it, there's definitely stuff out there i don't i so my only limitation in this industry and it's it is a limitation is i'm not a medical professional so i'm just a business guy that got into this and i love it i'm an industry expert but there are medical trials and things like that that are that are going on um i'm just not all that i don't see that stuff until it's done because they don't really share that stuff with some you know, random business guy. So there's stuff going on all the time behind the scenes. There's people like me or like-minded that are trying to push this forward. You know, they want insurance. They want Medicare to cover this. So just know that there's stuff trying to happen. I'm not the only person in this industry pushing forward. There's many, 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 there's many people like me. And some of them have, you know, letters behind their name, PhD, MD, that. I just don't have any of that. Okay. Um, What's one health or wellness practice you think would be kind of niche that you swear by that most people might not know about? Ooh. <laughs> um, well, I lift weights. I, I, I think lifting weights heavy is very important. I've been doing that since my mid 20s and I've never stopped. So putting on muscle is good. Um, obviously, everybody knows the cliche things. Try to eat is relatively clean. Um, I'm a big fan of, uh, so, you know, one thing I do, I'm a big fan of NAD plus. Have you heard of that? Yeah. It's supposed to be uh, like a cellular regenerative. Yeah. yeah. And I'm not even good at explaining it. It's just because like I've read all about it, but it's, you know, you, you comprehend it, but it's such big words. It's, it's, it's hard for me to convey, but if anybody's listening here that wants to learn about NAD plus, it is definitely the next thing in biohacking. And I've been doing injections of it now for about, four or five months. And it's really good for a lot of things at the cellular level. But one thing I've noticed and the reason I do it at 41, I've got, you just, I told you I have four or five businesses going on. It really gives me focus and clarity. So that is something that you get pretty immediate. So NAD plus um, injections or IV, there's a lot of debate in the industry about the best way to actually get it into you. And the best way is with an IV, but it's so powerful that you almost have to do a four hour drip because if you push NAD plus intravenously too fast, you'll get sick. It's like that. It's like that powerful. So the wow. second best way, which I found to be really good, is uh, injecting it. So just getting a little insulin needle every couple days and just take it, drawing out a little bit of NAD plus in a peptide form that you mix with static water or saline. And I do that about every three days, and I found that to be I can actually definitely feel the difference when I do any. I've heard Rhonda Patrick talk about it with certain doctors, a certain podcast on Joe Rogan. He has doctors yep. on who talks about the NAD plus. And uh, I actually got the pill form of it. And I took that for a little bit. I didn't feel much effect, but maybe it's because I didn't take the whole bottle or something like that. But uh, my opinion, Mark, in my experience, I did the pills for about eight, nine months and I didn't really feel anything. And I was trying to do it because that's the easiest way to do it. And I was hoping that the pills would work. But if if you really read about it, um, there's a lot of there's a lot of stuff out there that says the, the, says the pills really aren't going to do it. You, you either have to do the IV or you have to do it, um, you know, direct injection. And um, you know, it's not cheap. But I just bit the bullet and said, having my mental, you know, being sharp and focused, trying to run all these businesses, it's definitely worth it for me. So nothing can really beat the IV injection form of most medicines I well there's no there's 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 two things the iv is where they drip it and they would do that about once a week but it takes about four hours i don't have four hours to sit and do an iv um what i have found is that doing it an injection like a little like you buy a peptide you mix it and it's it's liquid you draw it up with a with the insulin syringe and you just do a subcutaneous injection which is just a little bit of body fat by your stomach it's nothing to it. You just draw out about 
three cc about three tenths of a cc to five tenths of a cc and just shoot yourself every couple of days that is just as good as an iv and it's way easier than sitting and trying to schedule a four-hour iv that's what i would suggest is doing it that way so as someone who recently received stem cell injections i'm, I'm curious about what you think are the most important uh, factors in maximizing the benefits of these treatments uh, what should i be focusing on during my recovery here oh i think some of the general consensus would be like especially since you just got it today make sure you're staying extra hydrated because that's uh cells healthy cells need need water so make sure you're drinking extra water for the next few weeks at least that's good for your cells try to limit smoking drinking if you're going to do it just make sure you drink more water so just know that smoking and drinking dehydrates you so um i don't know your lifestyle or or care i don't judge but just know that staying hydrated is key after a stem cell treatment for the first few weeks and months staying hydrated after stem cells very important keeping the cells healthy and yep. flowing and all that so your for your appearance on andy elliott's podcast was quite impactful for me uh, yep. how was being on a platform like that how has it shaped your approach it's, to it's, it's been good in fact he just dropped it he just dropped our second one last night I watched so, it. It was very good. Okay. It was yeah, the second good. one. I actually haven't watched it yet. <laughs> I don't. I don't really like watching myself on these things, so I'm not sure that I will watch it. But um, it's it's been good. I mean, it's we've gotten a ton of business from it, a lot of interest. Um, I'm going to another conference with him in a couple of weeks. His master closer event. I'm probably going to go to most of his events. Uh, he loves it. You know, Andy Ellie does it himself, and he swears by it. His whole team, his whole workout team, and you know we treated a lot of shoulders, backs, knees, hips. So they're big believers. It's, 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 it's been good. It's opened up, you know, there's a lot of people in his world and his, his sphere that we're hoping to get close to as well. Other people like Andy Elliott. So that's kind of the big picture there with regenerative revival. So regenerative revival, part of my business is when we go at like affiliates, you know, people like Andy Elliott. So we're okay. hoping to get, you know, continue to work with him, build that base. And then he's probably going to introduce us to more people in that sphere. Okay. So do you think there's a huge uh, correlation between mindset and recovery, especially when you go on, uh, like having a procedure, something like stem cell or, you know, uh, therapy, would you, do you think there's a huge uh, correlation between mindset and recovery and mental strength? And I think so. I mean, I think mindset just for not just recovery, but for everything, right? Um, er everything we do, having the proper mindset is is huge. Um, and I, I think that's absolutely true when it comes to fitness, recovery, mind over matter. Um, I'm not there's obviously science that's going on. That's not to say that this is woo woo. And, and you know, if you don't have the right mindset, the stem cells won't work. But yeah, everything about fitness, like making yourself do it, um, the recovery side, it's, it's hard work and it starts with mindset. Yeah, I absolutely agree. I feel like mindset is everything in your recovery. Um, so we have things like Neuralink coming out and AI. There's yeah. been a huge emphasis on that. What are your thoughts on the intersection of technology such as Neuralink with stem cell research and regenerative medicine? Ooh, good question. I'm going to just, I'm going to plead ignorant on this. I have not really tried to think, I haven't given one thought about Neuralink and how it pertains to stem cells, but I'm glad you brought that up because I know what I'm gonna be researching over the weekend. So <laughs> I don't have any insight on that because I have not looked, but I will I will look into it. Do you stay updated with the latest research and developments and oh yeah, uh, therapies and recovery and stuff like that? I do, yep, okay. yep. Uh, do you personally stay in peak health and wellness? Uh, are you always trying to work out and gain an advantage in that way i do my best man um anything i can do um anything i can do to fight father time i'm kind of obsessed with that so stem cells are a huge part of that like you i mean for a lot of reasons recovery um injury because at you know at 41 i've got i've been lifting heavy for years i still play basketball a few days a week i'm in like hoops leagues so that's kind of a source of pride for me to make sure my knees and my joints are good enough to keep doing that so um yeah I'm, I'm doing everything i can stem cells are just the best i mean it's the cream of the crop that's why they're expensive uh, but yeah I, I personally that's why I, I think i was meant for this business like i said i didn't really go into it looking for it so maybe it's 
luck or God or whatever you want to believe, but um, certainly my the way I think um, really fits in well with this industry because I'm all about optimizing what the body can do, um, stretching out the prime, <laughs> stretching my prime out as much as I can. I've got two boys at 12 and eight and they're great athletes. And, you know, I spend half my time yeah, watching them watch play them too. So um, it's kind of fun to be like, hey, I can still go out there and do the stuff that they're doing. and I want to keep being able to do that. Awesome. Yeah, I think that's very important, uh, especially when you have kids, you know, you want to have the healthiest future for them to be able to provide and uh, set their future up in the most in the best way you can. Um, and I want them to see me. I like I want them to see me as as a healthy, vibrant dad, because I'm not 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 trying to shit on anybody. But, you know, there's a lot of dads. Some of them are in great shape. But, you know, at age 40, you can go you can go one of two ways. You can look and act like you're 60 or you can kind of be what I'm trying to be, which is somebody that's still trying to stay in it. And, you know, like, I'm not like, Oh, I used to be this or that. It's like, no, I'm trying to still be, I'm trying to get stronger, trying to get better. I'm, you know, so I think that's important. I certainly hope my boys are seeing that and think it's cool that their dad has big muscles or can, <laughs> still plays basketball, all that type of stuff. So, yeah. yeah. So for someone like me, say someone in my situation is watching this, who is actively trying to recover and improve their quality of life, how can stem cells play a role in their long-term wellness and recovery? Well, I mean, I know that you know, because you've done it before and you've done a lot of research, uh, the potential for stem cells to regenerate some of the nerve damage. I mean, obviously, that would be the best case scenario, I think, right, is you get some uh, nerve um, regeneration, some movement back. Um I don't know this, you know, because I'm not your doctor. I don't know the specifics of your injury, but I think you're on the right path. I, I'm pretty excited about us doing the stem cells directly into those areas again. Um, you know, feeling better. Obviously, the better you feel, the more likely you are to want to go work out, the more likely you are to want to do things that are beneficial to you. So feeling good. I, half of this is, you know, starts with feeling good, and which is why I like NAD plus too, because it helps me feel good and I feel good. I feel focused. It makes me want to go to the gym. It makes me want to work harder. So I'd, I'd say that it, it all plays together. Awesome. I appreciate all the knowledge you've given me today and the audience. I feel like that would have, uh, whoever's listening to this have helped them out tremendously and deciding whether they want to go through with this procedure or not. Um, but just got a, one more question for you. Yep. I know your time is valuable. Uh, you got a lot of things to go to, uh, and attend to. Uh, so if you could have dinner with any historical figure who had a significant impact on medicine or health, who would you do it with? Who would it be and why? Ooh, ooh, good one. Any historical figure. See, I'm a history nerd. So when you said any historical figure, I started thinking, you know, Napoleon or Alexander the Great. But then you, you said um, on, on, the medical side, on the medical side. Um, Are there any historical figures you can think of that have had a huge impact on medicine that got us got us to where we are today uh th this is going to be a, a a corny answer but um the person that discovered dr wharton is the one that dis <laughs> he discovered wharton's jelly which is actually where we get the stem cells from so this is in like 1754 1794 but he was studying the umbilical cord and the, the stuff that runs through every umbilical cord, you guys can look this up. It's called Wharton's Jelly, W-H-A-R-T-O-N-S, named after Dr. Wharton. And he's the one that discovered that this gelatinous, gooey stuff that runs through the umbilical cord has all sorts of life-saving nutrients. He probably didn't know about stem cells in, but he knew there was collagen and all that other good stuff in there. So just because he put me on the spot about the medical thing, I'll say Dr. Wharton because we're talking about stem cells today. And I would love to pick his brain to be like, what made you even want to look into this? And I think it'd be cool to show him, be like, look what we've done because of your discovery. Look at, you know, now all these people are doing it. It's regenerating tissues that he would be fun to talk to because I'm sure he had no idea where it would go after his discovery. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah shout out to Dr. Wharton on that. Yeah. Uh, I think I had Wharton's jelly today, actually. In my yeah, you did. Yep, you did. Yeah. And your stem cells in the IV is also Wharton's jelly derived. It's processed differently, but yeah, Wharton's jelly is what it's, that's, that's, that's the best of the best type of stem cell. It's Wharton's jelly for those listening runs through every umbilical cord. So whether you want to call it umbilical cord stem cells or Wharton's jelly stem cells, most people say umbilical cord because nobody has ever heard of <laughs> Wharton's jelly. So I don't blame you. It's kind of an 
insider um, thing, but yeah. Awesome. Well, that was an enlightened conversation with our guest here today, Seth from Regenerative Medicine. I hope all of you guys enjoyed it as much as I did. We covered a lot of topics today from the basics of stem cells to the future of regenerative medicine and how it can help recovery and beyond. If you found this episode viable, please make sure to share it with your friends and subscribe to the podcast for more insightful discussions. Don't forget to follow Seth. Uh, I'm going to link his information down at the bottom and where you can connect with him. Uh, also, Mark, if anybody yeah. goes to gotstemcells.com, all one word, it does take them to a landing page that's got a lot of info about how to set up an appointment for a consultation call. That's that's where you went from Andy okay. Elliott's. Yeah. So you guys heard him, gotstemcells.com. Yeah. Are you on social media at all? Instagram, Facebook? Yeah, we are. Yep. At Regenerative Revival. But really the best thing to go to, um, we haven't built up the Regenerative Revival social media as much as we should. Um, if you just want to learn about us, go to gotstemcells.com. You could go to my personal Instagram, which is sberge, S-B-E-R-G-E underscore 33. That's my personal Instagram. I've got a lot of info on there. Well, um, I'll link everything down at the bottom, how you guys can connect with him and get uh, with his company. Um, so don't forget to follow him and check him out there and his company uh, for more information on stem cell treatments. Uh, so thank you for tuning in. Thank you for joining me today. And uh, I look forward to talking to you again in the future. We will. Thank you, Mark. Good luck. Nice talking to you, Seth. See you See again. You, all right guys set there very insightful conversation there that we just had very interesting stuff